Welcome to another episode of The Cynical Writer. Now, before we get started, I would just like to remind everyone that the best way to support this channel is to purchase my books, and I've left a link in the description section in case you're interested. Now, where do I uh, stand um, politically? Now, some of you may be asking, why is he talking about politics? Well, the thing is, is that I never talk about politics if I don't think it's necessary. But in some cases, I do believe it is necessary because it's imp because as a writer, obviously, my political worldview affects my writing, whether consciously or subconsciously. So I do think it can be a good idea to know where I stand on said issues. And um, now, I don't really like labels like... Uh, left wing right wing because i think in some sense they're they're arbitrary and um and tribalistic and be, because i don't like the fact that you ha will have people that because they'll support one side that means that they can't even entertain an idea that exists outside of that orthodoxy and so people will often adopt beliefs that have nothing to do with each other or, or that even contradict each other. For example, you can have someone who believes in some kind of, let's say, socially progressive cause and also believes in climate change. But those two things don't really have uh, very much in common. You, you, you know, it doesn't follow that by supporting one, you have to support the other. And um, so um, in that sense, uh, I think that um, such ideologies are very limited and very arbitrary. Um, however, for the sake of simplification, I'll talk to you about my so-called left-wing beliefs, and then I'll talk to you about my so-called right-wing beliefs. And again, this isn't a video where I'm trying to give thorough, robust arguments in favor of my positions. I, I, I could make you know long videos, you know, on every one of these topics, but that that's not my goal. My goal is to is to just uh, let you know where I stand. And again. You can certainly, I, and I welcome you, you talking about your own political philosophy in the comment section. However, however, don't use this as an attempt to try to thoroughly debunk me or, or call me a horrible person. Because again, the purpose of this video is not to, to say why I'm right. It's basically just to let you know where I stand. And um, so, up until maybe the 1990s, I would have voted um, left on quite a few, uh, for, for, for the most part. Um, because I do lean left on quite a few issues. So, for example, I support universal health care because I believe that everyone should have the right to life, um, even if they can't afford it, even if they can't contribute to society. And then especially since since uh, people, at least, at least children, at least K through 12, are entitled um, to, um, to uh, go to to school, public school for free, I believe, obviously, if people aren't healthy, then education doesn't matter very much, so I think society is very inconsistent on this issue, and I know there are problems with universal health care systems and all of that, but I do believe that there's, that it can't just be up to the free market when it comes to health care, and that, which is why I'm also um, for universal basic income, because I believe that, again, everyone has the right uh, to, to life, even if they can't or won't contribute to society, because I believe life is in, is fundamentally and intrinsically valuable. And uh, I no, I'm not as I wouldn't identify as a socialist or a communist, even though at one time I may have used those terms uh, um, to describe myself. Because ultimately, I believe that you need a mixture of different economies in order to survive. And when society becomes too collectivist, or when it becomes too um, individualist, it ultimately suffers. So I think you need a balance, and so I, I so I don't think that that universal basic income is going to stop people from working, but it will make it where people will have a supplementary income when they fall on hard times, and I think that that should be the purpose uh, of it. And I also believe that artists would benefit immensely from universal basic income because artists, except for a select few, have never survived solely on the free markets. They've relied traditionally on patrons and other means. So I believe universal basic income would help uh, uh, artists out immensely, which is why I do believe, generally speaking, that the rich, uh, rich, wealthier people should pay higher taxes. It's not because I think that they don't deserve their money or anything like that. It's just because obviously, if someone can makes more money than they can afford, you know, to, you know, to uh, pay, give away more or pay more as well. Um, and I am also. Which is why I'm also um, for uh, stricter gun laws because I believe that um, 
because uh, it's not that I'm against gun rights, but I but I do think there are there should common sense laws should be passed because I don't believe that assault weapons should be readily available where anyone can get their hands on them. Uh, I do believe they should be regulated where you know people have to be 21. You can't just go into a store and 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 buy an assault weapon because some people like to think that gun violence is solely due to mental health, but I but but to me it's like. It, there are other countries that deal with mental health that don't have the gun violence that we have, but, but it's because guns are so ubiquitous in in this country. And I think there needs to be a balance between, you know, gun gun rights, but also keeping people safe. But a lot of people have this individualistic, don't tread on me mentality, but that, but that ultimately results in um, a lot of chaos and a lot of death because it's amazing to me how you have a lot of conservatives who will... Um, claim that they are for family values and Christian values, but then a lot of their policies go go against those values because it becomes a dog-eat-dog -dog world where only the individual matters. And um, I am also, again, um, I, I, I support, uh, I believe in climate change, and I believe that uh, we need uh, to... Um, to protect the environment, and we need to discover, you know, new, new ways of uh, renewing energy. And I'm not a, a climate change alarmist who believes that the world's going to end in the next ten years, but I, but I do believe that ultimately we need to be uh, lo lo looking um, towards uh, uh, gathering renewable energy sources. Um, again, I'm also, I, and I'm against the death penalty, and because I believe everyone has the fundamental right to life, regardless of who they are, what they've done. I um, I am generally speaking anti-war, and I also uh, believe that although I don't believe we that I do believe there need to be immigration laws. I do believe that immigration overall is is a good thing. We need to be generous with immigration policy. So as you can say, there are quite a few issues where I lean left. Now um now where do I but uh, however at the same time I am also highly pro-life. Um. In fact, uh, I, I would say that that is probably the opinion that I'm that that, that I hold, my strongest political opinion is that I'm pro-life because I think it's so un, it's a black stain on America and on Europe that um, that, uh, that that America and Europe has has allowed basically the murder of children to go on for you know around sixty years and, and because there was a time where not ev not everyone believed that there was a time where life was valued. Um, in this in in America, but then in the late sixties, early seventies, um, the culture changed around that issue, and so I believe we need. So that's why I applauded the overturning of Roe v. Wade because ultimately I think we need to create a culture of life. And I don't even believe this is a left wing or right wing issue because ultimately, when you're dealing with something as fundamental as human life, I think that's something that transcends politics. And um, I, I I just think though we're living in a culture where a lot of people, sometimes very good people will be pro-choice because they have a cultural blind spot because they've been taught to see uh, uh, unborn children as less than human just as people once good people thought that slavery um, was appropriate and, and now some people will talk about well what about exceptions well again I think ultimately that the life of an unborn child should not be harmed without sufficient justification um, perhaps in the case of the in the life of the mother which in that case um, in many cases, if the life of the mother is in danger, the life of the child is in danger, so it's either save one or lose both. It's a very difficult situation. Um, now, when it comes to rape, and I know this can be an unpopular stance even among pro-lifers, but I don't think that abortion should be allowed in cases of rape, because ultimately, the life of the child still has value regardless of how it was conceived. Now, I understand you know, why emotionally, why people think it should be appropriate. In fact, I deal with this issue in my book, Silent Reckoning, if you've read it. Emotionally, I can understand it. I don't think that people who seek abortion in cases of rape come from an evil place. But at the same time, I, I, I think that if one is to be logically and philosophically consistent, the life still has value regardless of how it was conceived. Now, when it comes to, um, you know... Uh, uh, pro life. Uh, when it comes to like LGBTQ issues, 20 years ago, my position on such issues would have been, um, you know, fairly moderate. But because we live a, but because now we, we we live in a world where the society has moved so far to the left on this issue, that now I I suddenly seem um, conservative um, in comparison because. 
I'm not really concerned for the most part with what should be what should be um, legal, um, wh- whether or not people should be able to um, form certain kinds of legal unions or whether or not pe- people should be able to identify how they want or live how they want. Obviously, there are certain practicalities for how people you know, can live in, in a country here and now. But at the same time, I think that... Um, you know, one should not defile or try to uh, change the definition of marriage or what a man is or what a woman is, because ultimately that leads to relativism. And if you don't believe that language is objective, then how can we even be having the conversation that we're having? So I think that by changing such definitions, whether it's marriage or what a man is or what a woman is, society will ultimately slide into relativism, which is why I, I, I think that, the, to me, the problem with the political left is that they've abandoned any kind of spiritual or transcendent framework and has become purely secular and relativistic. And um, now when it comes to... Um, I am also against wokeism or, or this... Again, or one last thing, again, 20... 20 years ago, my position on such issues would have made perfect sense, but we've moved so far to the left that I now seem conservative in comparison. Now, however, at the same time, I am also against wokeism or this idea of um, judging people uh, primarily uh, by the um, the color of their skin and not by you know their um, by their actions or by um, or so I'm against very much against affirmative action quotas and uh, or or um, for example, um, changing history in, in order to serve a politically correct narrative. Um, I, I, I am against that aspect because ultimately I think that ruins art and storytelling, defiles it in the end. And um, now, uh, now again, though, um, I would say that overall I do lean more left than right. And there are some issues that I'm willing to look past more than others. Like, for example... Like now that Roe v. Wade has been overturned, if you could, it, you know, on the if you, for example, a Democrat, I think a Democrat who's running for president now, if they were to say something like um, the um, abortion should be left up to the states, I think that I, I think that's a perfectly reasonable position. I could probably vote for said candidate. There's probably no way that I could vote Republican at this point because of just how much um, you know disagreement there is. So I'm hoping the Democrats can it can in the future. Um, change their position somewhat. Now, I don't think ultimately that it necessarily should be left up to the states because um, the le- because to me, you know, a human life, is it really fair that someone should have the right to life in one state but not another? However, I do think that could be a short-term practical solution if, uh, if a Democrat didn't want to really alienate either side. And so that's a position I could support even if I don't think it, it should necessarily be the final uh, solution. And uh, so that's where I stand politically. Obviously, I can't touch on every issue in a video. And uh, so um, you can let me know where you stand politically in the comments. I, I hope you enjoyed this this video. Uh, stay tuned for a more episodes of The Cynical Writer. Make sure to check out my books in the description section. And until next time, goodbye.